The ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu said that a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. You had better make certain that the step is in the right direction. You know, a, a couple of years ago over in, in Kenya, East Africa, I was asked to teach in a seminary. I was asked to teach a class to pastors on church history. And I, I, it became obvious that their expectation was that I would go through, you know, history, the time of history, and maybe time in the time of Constantine, into the Dark Ages, into the Middle Ages. And, but church history, if you're going to study church history, you need go no further than the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Because that's where all of the seeds of the change that's taken place in the church are obvious, okay? Right. The detrimental change of the church. Well, bear in mind the fact that, you know, Paul says, writing to Timothy, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, he says, you know, that all scripture is God-breathed and profitable. Mm -hmm. It's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Yes. Look at the letters in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. They're mostly there for correction. Right. Okay, they are for training in righteousness. They are for encouragement. But letter after letter after letter is dealing with correction that needs to take place. Mm -hmm. Correction because something has gone askew. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. And those seeds of the, the things that have gone askew in the early church are the things that manifest more and more as we go through time. Yes. You know, if you get on a boat here in the United States and you start heading for Europe, mm -hmm. let's say I'm, I'm going from Florida to England, which we've done many times, as a matter of fact, and you, your course is off by a couple of degrees. Mm -hmm. By the time you've traveled three, 4,000 miles across the Atlantic Ocean, you'd be, you'd be so far off the mark, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You better be prepared to speak Swahili instead of speaking, well, it's true. the Queen's English, yeah. right? Yeah. So things have been going off, and, and there's no doubt about that. So I want to talk about, I mean, we could look at times, the early 4th century, in the time of Emperor Constantine. Um, that, that is a major transitional time in the history of the church. And I would argue, not, not for the better, but for the worse, okay? Mm -hmm. I would talk about, uh, in, in the early 1500s, Martin Luther, where there is a massive course correction, mm -hmm. taking us back towards faith in Christ and re reliance on the Word of God, okay? But change happens in baby steps. Yes. Sometimes change you know, happens. Change always happens in baby steps. A little bit at a time. I'm, I'm gonna, it, it, the problem is, more often than not, we don't see those small steps. We're oblivious to them because they don't have major impact. You know, right. as they, as you go along, uh, but all of a sudden, you know, you wake up one day and things have changed. Right. I mean, I can give you all the worldly examples. Look at, you know, World War II in, in the United States. Pearl Harbor, pow, happened in an instant on a Sunday morning mm -hmm. in, in December of 1941, December 7th, 1941. Happened in an instant. It did not happen in an instant. It's been building up. Oh, my goodness. It was building up politically. It was building up militarily. Yes. Japan had been preparing for war, arming itself, building its armament. They had been aggressive on the mainland with China. I mean, you know, the signs were all there. It, it, it was a little bit, a little bit. Same thing in, in Europe with Hitler. Okay? You know, Hitler's blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg is like this instantaneous attack on it's Poland. Lightning fast yeah. war. Well, the only thing about that lightning fast war, which I understand the attack was, that had been building up, and Hitler had made evident for years. They had railroad stopping. tracks stopping right at the border. Uh, and the people on the other side of the border were saying, what's right. these for? That's my point. So, you know... It looks like, okay, this event happened in an instant and everything changed. But if you look at historically, mm -hmm. the steps had been there, one step at a time, line yes. upon line, precept upon precept. Yeah. And it had been building up. And it's the same, that's why I'm saying, you know why? Because if Christianity is supposed to be constant, and the enemy of Christianity is the enemy of our souls, that old serpent from the garden. The first revelation of the serpent is he was more crafty, more subtle than any other beast of the field. Okay? It happens little by little. 
So if you were to look, and this is what I want to do, I, I want to spend some time, and it'll probably be well beyond this one particular program, maybe for the next two or three programs. And if you, if you look at Acts chapter 2, for example, all right? Yes. So this is right after, okay, Acts chapter 1, Jesus has ascended into heaven, all right? Mm -hmm. And he tells the disciples to stay in Jerusalem until power comes upon them. And power comes upon them, when? Well, in Acts chapter 2, it says, All those who had believed together had all things in common. This is the day of Pentecost happened, and the Holy Spirit fell upon them. And then the first thing you see is that all of the believers, they were together and had all things in common. Okay, the, in other words, there is true unity in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, we've talked about it here before. Yes. There are over 30,000 some odd denominations in Christianity together today, right? Well, how do you go from having this unity, a real unity, to being divided into 30,000 different denominations? It didn't happen overnight. It happened little by little by little, okay? 